Welcome. In your readings, we ran across this funny little guy called an interface. An interface is a way for us to provide a common, a common set of methods that classes can use. A little bit like the abstract class we had talked about earlier, where we had made get pay info an abstract method, and all of the subclasses used that method. The reason why we could is because we had made it visible or accessible through the abstract class with its just simple declaration. Interfaces work pretty much the same way. We provide a method signature. Now, we don't go any further than that. In fact, it's illegal in an interface for us to try to fully define a method. Just the signature is, uh, is used. In the example we see on the screen right now, uh, you can notice that I have a printable uh, interface. Rather than taking class as the keyword to dictate the terms as to what we're trying to create, we're using the keyword interface. In that interface, we have a print all method. That's it. Now, let's look at how that interface is being implemented by our classes. In the example, we had a printable things, uh, printable. The printable uh, class, uh, uh, two of them. The top one is person, and that starts on your line one. And then on line nine, we have another class, and that one is stock. Now, the importance of this is notice that a person and a stock have very little in common. Uh, they're completely different things. And you wouldn't think necessarily that they go together under a common interface. But even very different things have some things that run common to them. Uh, in this case, we want to print them both. We want to be able to, uh, to create a display. So, what we'll do is implement the printable interface. Now, notice to implement it, we're using the keyword implements. Now, uh, I need, in order for me to use the classes that implement that interface, I must override the method uh, that's defined in that, uh, in that interface. And in this case, the method is print all. So, both the person and the stock have overridden that interface method. Also notice that we don't have an extends in the uh, class definition at all. Uh, the nice thing about interfaces is that they allow us uh, to reserve that uh, without trying to extend an abstract class. If you remember, Java is a single line of inheritance. We can only extend to one superclass. Interfaces can also be added in the same uh, def class definition. So we could have a uh, employee example uh, that extends person and implements printable. Uh, in both cases, then, uh, I've gotten the, uh, the ability to join an inheritance tree and to implement a common interface. Uh, the common mistake is to consider these interfaces as multiple lines of inheritance because we're getting two different entities, and they're really not. A uh, class has behavior. Uh, an interface has none. It makes them two very, very different things. We can try running our program, but first let's take a look and try to review what it's supposed to do. Uh, what I see in here in person is we have an override for uh, the uh, pr uh, print all, and the only thing that's going to do is print the name, and that name is going to be Bill. So name is Bill, age is whatever the age is set to. So we know that Bill is going to be the uh, name of 
uh, of uh, the name presented in this string, and 22 is going to be the age. Moving down a little bit to the stock uh, class, we can see in there it's taking a ticker symbol, X, Y, and Z. Uh, we have 100 shares. We have uh, the current price at 4000 he's saying, in pennies. Uh, and then we have our definition for print all. In the print all, what we'll have is uh, simply a string that is going to print out the number of shares, the current price, uh, and then the value of it uh, by multiplying the current price times the shares. What he's trying to show us is that even though the behavior associated with print uh, with the uh, uh, with the print all method is very very different. It's a common uh, it's a common behavior in the sense that they both produce a report. Now, let's try to run this and see what we have as a result. All right, and I do believe that's a test. There. If I spelled everything right, that should run. There we go. What we can see is that the instance of, uh, of the person is going to print out Bill and age 22, exactly as we had mentioned. Uh, the X, Y, and Z, the stock, is printing out the various information about that particular stock. Let's look at the main uh, class that is going to be running this, which is the printable test, just so we can see how these instances are being implemented. Here, we can see we're making an instance of a person, and then we're making an instance of a stock. Then, all we're doing is printing the stock and the uh, uh, printing the person on 6 and the stock on 7. Then, He's creating a variable for printable. Printable is our interface. It is not capable of being instantiated ever. A little bit like a uh, like our abstract class, uh, but in this case, rather than a subclass, normally the class that does the implementation usually, in fact, overrides the uh, interface methods. It must, in fact, override those methods or they can't be instantiated. Uh, the, uh, the class can't be instantiated. So, notice what's going on on lines 9 through 13. In here, we've created P, which is a person. And he is implicitly casting it to the printable, which is PR. This is a common practice. Interfaces, just like abstract classes or anything else in the class hierarchy, uh, is capable of having a class being cast to its data type. And that's exactly what we're doing here. That way, we have the same feature that we had seen earlier uh, where uh, we had an array of employees. And we decided we wanted to treat all of the different employee types in a similar way as the same data type. We can do exactly the same thing with interfaces. Uh, interfaces tend to be lighter weight. Uh, also, they tend to be able to abstract out uh, the classes that are being hidden by them to a much greater degree than abstract classes do. And so we achieve uh, yet a little higher degree of, uh, uh, of uh, loose coupling 
And make no mistake about it, that loose coupling issue is very important, particularly as uh, your projects get bigger and bigger uh, and maintenance becomes a bigger problem. The more we can segregate uh, and create uh, bridges from classes, regardless of data type, uh, the better off we are in terms of maintenance. Uh, how difficult would it be, for example, uh, for me to add um, a ship class to this uh, to this operation, the only thing that ship class might need is a print all method, and the print all method could be uh, some of the statistics about that ship, uh, how fast it can go in the water, how uh, how big it is, uh, things like that. Um, so, uh, as a general purpose tool, it's really important, and my program doesn't have to worry about whether I'm talking about a person, a stock, or a uh, ship. We'll be using interfaces quite a, uh, quite a, uh, quite a bit uh, as we move through the remainder of, our, uh, of your exercises. So saying, now we can move on and do our readings uh, followed by our exercise and I'll talk to you then. Have fun. <laughs>